Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 5 of the long French campaign. We have a bit of a run-in with the Italians. The Italians which somehow have a bug because they have battleships, but they're not using them. They don't even register that they have battleships. So this is one of the bugs that is clearly in 1.06, at least beta. Um, I suspect that something like this is going to get fixed. Anyway, we have a run-in with what they do have here, which is a lot of cruisers and a couple of torpedo boats. I have one battleship, Solferino. I have a couple of heavy cruisers to escort, a couple of light cruisers to escort, and a bunch of torpedo boats. Like, a lot of torpedo boats. Um, seeing as I'm not that big of a fan of these torpedo boats, I might just kind of sacrifice them into the enemy fleet as, well... As a way to get rid of them is what I was going to say. I think... No, I'm not going to sacrifice them. The problem with sacrificing them is that you're going to give the Italians a whole lot of victory points. And if you do that, then their war cause advances, if you will. And I don't want that. So, um, how about we just pull all the torpedo boats away and let this party be handled by everybody else. Who is left, that is. Let's see, all of you are gonna s just retreat and I'll scrap you when you get back to base. <laughs> that's essentially how that's gonna work. Because scrapping ships is not frowned upon. Scrapping ships is fine. Okay, so that means I got the battleship, I have five heavy cruisers and three lights. That's it. Ugh, guys, no, 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 not like this. So, fully no out. Light cruisers, Jean Bart, Hirondelle, Armorique, out. Detach. And I want to join this div with that div. Five heavy cruisers, one battleship. Off we go. Um, yeah, no, this is fine. I'm just going to keep them as a steady force around the battleship. Not screening, because I don't really trust that. Here we go. We have made contact with one of their, I suspect, light cruisers. This is the one that carries 4-inch guns, 5-inch guns, and 2.6-inch guns. And it's the first of many. Also, the torpedo boats are starting to pop out of the smoke screens. Um, not so much laid by themselves, but they are pretty dangerous nonetheless. I'm going to have the light cruisers go after these. That's the original tasking. That's the original job that I designed them for. 4-inch long barrels should allow for reasonable accuracy. And it is working. You can see that this torpedo boat's already taken quite a bit of damage. I have the heavy cruisers as a secondary line of defense against the in well, let's say the incoming heavy cruisers and light cruisers. The light cruiser is the outer perimeter, and so far it seems to be working out just fine. The battleship. Let's see where you are, Solferino. Uh, you are targeting. Oh, you're targeting the right. The torpedo boat. So, can we actually make those three inches work? Yep. The whole hotel goes to war. The hotel takes to the battle. Boink. We don't care about your puny shells here. You might have a 3.2 inch gun. Wait. You got a whole lot of guns on that torpedo boat. These guys have seven 3.2-inch guns? Let me see a model that's a little bit less broken. Oh, this is a different one. This one has six 1.8-inch guns and two 4.3s. Jesus. That's a lot of firepower for a torpedo boat. Okay. So they're turning them into gunboats rather than torpedo boats. And they will suffer the consequences for that action because it means that their torpedo capability is restricted. Torpedo launcher here is probably stuck between all these guns, and over here, I could see it just in front of the bridge, making it quite uncomfortable to use. Alright, that's one. Let's see. Focus on Coty. Oh, it pains my heart to have to sink the Coty, but. She's not on our side this campaign. If you don't know what I'm talking about, in the previous campaign that I ran, which was the Italian campaign, 1940. Back under 1.05, I had a light cruiser called Coty, and she did an incredible amount of work. She did a lot of convoy raiding, uh, securing convoys. She was 
maybe not so much instrumental in winning the war. But holy shit, I wouldn't have done it without her. Rosalino Pilo is taking torpedoes from heavy cruiser Saigon. Which are promptly, utterly missing the target. That thing is down. Raimundo Montacuccioli. Are you going to do any damage? Yes, you can. Okay. Let's see. Battleship, focus on the heavy cruiser. That's what you are best equipped for. We're going to get the light cruisers to probably come around again. The heavy cruisers here. Yeah, we're going to turn that way gently. Solferino is definitely taking hits. But taking them like a champ, because she's very heavily armored. I designed these battleships to sustain hits from enemy battleships. But if it's just cruisers and... What is that? Six inch guns they get? 6.2s. It's not that dangerous. Six inch guns can very well be tanked by the main belt. And these six inch guns can do what? They can hit me about four... Let's say... Yeah. Uh, with AP, they might get seven inches of armor pen. That's not going to cut it, Sunshine. You're going to need more than that. Now, I really hope that this campaign was going to be a bit less of a slaughter, but it looks like it's turning into one. In the previous episode, we kind of massacred the whole German Navy. Well, half the German Navy, to be more accurate. And now we're dealing with a large portion of the Italian fleet. It's not so much that the AI designs bad ships. I mean, these guns are quite good. But I think that the AI currently struggles with doing research. It's like they're programmed to just spend, spend, spend on building ships. And maybe not work with the research sliders the way that I've been doing. And I mean, just allocating more money towards research. It's like they're not doing that. And aside from that, they don't really know how to use these ships. Because they're almost all armed with torpedoes, but I'm not seeing any of them use them. Because they simply don't get into range. Sorry, Koti. They're just not getting into range. If you want to deal with a battleship like this, or a heavy cruiser group, you push into it. You just rush it. Now, I have a lot of firepower, and I am geared towards dealing with smaller ships quite well, especially with the heavy cruisers. But if there is a whole fleet like this coming at me, something is bound to get through. And of course, if the Italians had been able to make use of their battleships, this would have probably been far more difficult. Jeez, ammo explosions left and right here. That is another warship down. It's another light cruiser, which is taking a ton of hits. Over here we get ammo explosions. Why are they constantly getting ammo explosions? Oh, their torpedoes have detonated, that's why. That makes sense. I quite like those new torpedo mechanics, because it adds a whole lot of RNG into the mix. Whereas previously, you just spammed torpedoes, or the AI spammed torpedoes at you. And now that's not such a straightforward answer. Because your torpedoes can do all sorts of wonky shit. Uh, they can have duds. They can misfire. They can uh, just explode halfway towards the target. They can have issues such as um, being detonated on the deck if you have deck mounted launchers. They can be apparently also demolished when they're underwater on the light cruisers. It's a bit weird. It adds a whole new spectrum to the ability slash inability to use torpedoes. Jeez, I'm sinking these things faster than they're getting identified. Damage done, 58k. Damage taken, 1200. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I was hoping that this campaign was going to be harder because the enemy had so many ships. But at this rate, they won't have so many ships. <laughs> In a while. There goes a Francesco Stocco. Bye. Next is the Nettuno. The heavy cruisers are thinking, nope. I'm not waiting for this shit. There goes the Nettuno. Extensive fire. You had something explode. Yeah, ammo detonation. 
from a secondary gun from one of the six inchers on the Solferino. Solferino has taken some damage, to be sure. That ship looks a bit scorched here and there. Maybe because the fire is still raging. Aside from that, structurally, she's very sound. 95%. I'm not concerned about this ship. Okay, cruisers, we're going to push right into the enemy. We're going to get rid of their light cruisers first, because they're easy prey. And then we're going to turn around and get the heavy cruisers. Unless I want them to tell the tale of what happened here. Have them serve as a warning. What happens if you provoke the French? Seventy-four thousand damage done, fourteen hundred taken. It's just not fair. The battle is drawing to a close. I thought let's have a bit of a tally to see how much damage was done by each ship. The battleship did seventeen k, which is a very good portion of the eighty-three. But the heavy cruisers each really contributed. 5.3k, 7.4k, 7.6, 12k on the Saigon. Pai Ho, always a bit late because she's the trailing in the division, 4.7. But these heavy cruisers are really doing exactly what I was hoping they would do. They're tanking, they're um, mostly massacring light cruisers, and they're really not taking that much damage while doing it. These long range, or these long barrels, these long 6 inch guns, long 5 inchers, they're really working. Look at that. That's an 8.3% chance to hit, and if you just throw enough shells at them, something will hit, and more often than not, these Italian light cruisers just explode violently as their ammunition gets detonated. I still got two heavy cruisers around, but I've decided that if the game wants me to end the battle, or is suggesting that I end the battle, I will let those guys live as a way to warn the rest of the fleet. Don't mess with the French. And here we are. Another extremely poor outcome for the Italian-German alliance. They have lost one heavy cruiser. I didn't realize they had five survivors. Eleven light cruisers were sent to the bottom. There too was a survivor and seven torpedo boats decided not to join the living. Sorry, five torpedo boats, two survivors. So it didn't sink as many as I thought. But I sunk enough. That was 16, and I didn't take a single casualty myself. The casualties, however, are about to happen now. At the hands of my shipyards. Because I am going to scrap my torpedo boats. I don't find that they add a whole lot. Um, they're mostly just... Well... Expensive. <laughs> Especially when they need repairs. And they often need repairs. Look at this. Oh, sorry, this is the battleship group. So, all the torpedo boats, all the Leopard class, I'm going to scrap them. Sadly, I have to do this one by one. But this, of course, does free up some budget. And uh, since they don't exactly add a whole lot to power projection, nor have they done a lot of convoy raiding, I think I only had one attack enemy convoy mission, I don't really think I will miss these. A few months later, we have a coast alarm. An enemy has been sighted near our coast. I think they mean coast. It's just not really true, because it's not my coast. It's the English coast. Fortunately for the British, I have the battleship Languedoc around, which is going to try and eliminate the Thuringen. Thuringen is armed with bigger guns. 12.5 inch versus my 11 inch. The thing is, I probably have more armor than they do. My armor quality is better, my crew training is better, my bulkheads are more. Uh, this ship costs 5.9 million, mine costs 9.6. It's vastly more expensive. And um, I think it also has to do with range finding a lot. If I can eliminate one more German battleship, that'd be great. Let's get to it. Before I draw your attention to the incoming battle a ship on battleship action, I want to have a look at the wave, which is just coming clean out of the water. Um, the wave is a fast torpedo boat at almost 32 knots, but it's an awful design. It's absolutely god-awful. It has 100% pitch. 90.5% roll. The accuracy that I'm going to get out of this ship is probably zero. They have a veteran crew, so at least they got that going for them. 
but they only get one torpedo and a couple of three inch and quite a few 2.2 inch guns and that's it. It's not a lot of firepower. The engagement between Long Dock and the enemy battleship is going to be very short range. I think the enemy battleship does have an interesting design. The 12.5 inch on the bow and stern and then a couple of 10.2 inchers amidships. But it does appear that that whole deck is flooding frequently. Not that that's going to really cause any issues for them, but okay. Um, since this torpedo boat is not one of mine, I'm just going to sacrifice it. Because, and this is going to be harsh, I care more about the, uh, the, well, the, the integrity of my battleships than about the British torpedo boats. The AI can always craft a few more torpedo boats, but... Building a battleship takes usually upwards of 12 months. Come on, get the accuracy in. Parcel pen. Exposing an awful lot of my ship here. This thing can probably hurt me pretty bad. No? Really? What's your pen? How can you not hit me or hurt me? Range 1.6. 25 inches of armor is what you can pen. I don't quite have that. Hmm. Okay, let's turn back to port. Slow the ship down a little. I don't have torpedoes. They don't have torpedoes. That's good. They only have two barrels firing at me, and I have four firing at them. Oh. <laughs> the torpedo boat distraction effect. Here we go again. What are you going to do, Turingen? Oh, hello. Secondaries on that. Or primaries, whatever. Primaries works. Art support. Torpedo this if you're still alive by the time that you can get that torpedo launcher to bear, which is mounted on the stern. Okay, new plan. Hard to starboard. Hard to starboard. No. Not a very good torpedo boat. Or rather, perhaps the accuracy of the Turingen is quite deadly. Turingen did take another couple of 11 inch hits. One for 400 damage, and with standard bulkheads, they're kind of seeing that maybe the standard bulkheads don't work that well. The wave is down. The torpedo boat is also down on their part, so we're just about even on torpedo boats. And now I find myself in a bit of an uncomfortable position, because this means the enemy is going to have all sorts of guns on me. I don't quite like this. Finish this off with the secondaries. Um, yeah, those 12.5 inches are looking at me, but they're bouncing off of me? How? They can't pen me because of my ricochet angle. Very nice. Their accuracy is uncertain. Ricochet. Mine is 100%. Let's see what these guys have. Hydraulic turrets, standard reloading... Increased HE for secondary, standard ratio for mains, compound armor, Citadel 1, no rangefinder, basic steam engine. Yeah, they're pretty basic ships. Pretty basic. Boom! Right through the bow. Flooding, damage to the secondary tower. This ship is probably going to flood out pretty soon. And the long dock has taken 2% structural integrity damage. This ship has taken 29% structural integrity damage, but more importantly... She's flooding quickly. She's already starting to roll over to starboard. And seeing the amount... I mean... Visually, I'd say this thing should probably already be sinking. Because the water is already washing or slash crashing over the deck. Going into these gun ports here. The casemate ports. I'd say by all intents and purposes, the ship should be already sinking. And actually, they kind of are. She's down to 15% buoyancy, 12, 10. Yeah, there goes Turing and heavy flooding. Now, because I had a torpedo boat and they really went to town on that, the enemy effectively did more damage. But fortunately, that does not really mean that they're going to win this battle. Because the important bit is they lost another battleship. My battleships that were initially around Palau were um, sent back for repairs because I believe all of them took some damage in one form or another. So they were all sent back 
And I can now uh, reconstitute that fleet and send them back out to Germany. Which I'm once again going to try and blockade. Because I want to make their economic life as difficult as possible. With a few more swift salvos, the Turingen, Pommern and S-55 have met their demise. Sadly, the British have lost their torpedo boat, but it is actually of no concern of mine. I gained 4,348 victory points versus 128 for the Germans for sinking that lonely torpedo boat. Oh, okay. Germany had a revolution. What does that mean for the war? I clicked that way too quickly. Public opinion, unrest, naval prestige, minus 83. They're despised. <laughs> Their GDP is down to 1.1 billion. Wow. Naval budget, 8 point... No, that's it. 8 million. Naval funds, 2 million. Crew pool, 4. Oh, boy. The, the once proud German Navy just isn't anymore. Um, are my battleships fixed? Yes. Very nice. Everybody... Reform in the North Sea. We have a harbor to annoy slash a nation to blockade. Anything interesting happening here? Oh, yes. The Patrie is dealing with a whole bunch of cruisers. And over here, the Diderot is defending two transports against, guess what, a whole bunch of cruisers. Diderot, let's have it out, shall we? Because the Italians are out for more. And if they want to play, we can give them a fight. After a bit of searching and apparently uh, running quite a while away from the transports, because there's 17 clicks between the transports and myself, I have found the enemy. Diderot was fixed after her encounter with a German torpedo and is now going to show the Italians the error of their ways. It's five heavy cruisers in a formation of four and one. And one of these cruisers is already taking quite a bit of damage. I would love not to get intimately acquainted with an Italian torpedo today, because I quite like the Diderot as she is. A Diderot is a slightly different design relative to the battleship we just saw. 11-inch guns, but 7-inch guns are secondaries. And this makes them exceptionally capable of dealing with cruisers. Oh, it's the Regina. Wow, we've seen both <laughs> the Coty and the Regina in this episode. Sadly, uh, they will both end up at the bottom of the sea. The 7-inch guns at this range, which is less than 2.5, can pen more than 13.4 inches of armor. That's a lot more than these Italian cruisers carry. And that means that these 7-inchers are very nice to have in this fight. Francesco Ferruccio has torpedoes out to 0.9 kilometer range, so we can still push in a bit closer. Let's switch fire, because this guy's very close and easy to hit. Uh, how much can my HE pen? 8.7 inches. I think HE is the better choice here. Yep. HE is the better choice here. That's how you do it. That was violent. Hit the armor belt, causing a main ammo detonation. <laughs> Big oof. <clears throat> Big oof. Where's the other light? No, where's the other cruiser at? Here. Okay, fine. One quarter the, uh... Ah, parcel pens. Probably ricochet angle. AP again. Let's see if we can get an AP shell to penetrate the aft of the ship. Tumble right through the ship. Yep, there we go. And find the magazine. Ammo detonation. That's going to give the Concordia something to worry about. Oh, buddy. You almost got caught in the fire there. Concordia losing 27% of her crew. This is just to slaughter people. I don't want this. I want to get the sense that these guys are going to put at least some sort of a fight. But they're just not doing anything. I mean, yes, they're trying, but I've done 12,000 damage versus 60. It's a 200 times markup. Not even funny anymore. I think we're going to have to come up with a list of ways to improve the AI. And the sad part is, I've been saying this for well over a year, potentially two years by now. The AI needs to improve. 
it needs to understand that if it has torpedo cruisers like this, it needs to charge in and torpedo the battleship from every which way. I might have maximum bulkheads, I might have a torpedo blister, but they can either hurt me really bad before sinking, or they might even kill me. But right now, with these puny guns of theirs, they're just not doing anything useful. They're just kind of sitting there plinking away at my ship as I sink one cruiser after the other. Sorry, Regina. There. This is just... no. Teach the AI or program the AI to start charging my ships down and my life becomes a lot harder. Teach them to have, let's say, four cruisers engage me and one cruiser potentially outrun me at 20 knots and go directly for my convoy. So I'm going to be forced to stick closer to the convoy instead of pushing out and hunting them down. Half the AI, well, bring out their battleships, but that's more of a strategic issue. Let me know down below in the comments, what do you think needs to change about the AI? Because they're just a bit of a pushover this way. Once again, a slaughter of the Italians, well, slaughter of the AI ships. 2,164 victory points. The Italians got seven for just showing up, I guess. The transports, I don't even think they saw the conflict. Maybe from 17 clicks out, they could do some spotting of the ammo explosions on the various different ships. But beyond that, they probably barely even noticed that they were under threat. A problem that I see is that this is going to get progressively worse. This is going to snowball, and here's why. I have been spending essentially all my money on research, and I'm still getting a pretty healthy economic growth. Despite this, well, no, not despite this growth, um, thanks to the, all this research, all this new tech that I'm getting, I'm getting very close to dreadnoughts, and once the shipyard finishes upgrading, I can build a dreadnought. That's going to completely wipe every single battleship they have off the map. It's going to probably single-handedly take on fleets. It's going to make for one or two interesting videos, but beyond that, not much. And as I continue to just bully the enemy fleets into submission, their economy is going to tank. Um, they're probably going to lose the war pretty soon. And because they lose the war, they're going to have to be either paying reparations or they're going to give me a province. Both of which are problematic for them. Because if they give me a province, their economy is going to suffer even more. So I would love to see various improvements to the system as it is currently in place. I want to see the AI use potentially bigger fleets to hunt down a battleship. Because right now it just seems to be pretty RNG. I want to see the AI throw, in the case of the Italians, for example, uh, I don't know, throw 20 torpedo boats at a battleship and they will win it. They have to land at least a few torpedoes and they will win it. But uh, the way it's happening now, it's pretty sad. Look at this. 20,000 victory points for me, 682 for the Germans. I'm not even sure why we're still talking about war. I don't get it. A lot has to change about this game. I will continue playing the campaign, but I'm going to wait for more interesting battles so that I can highlight those in the video. Let me know down below in the comments what you think needs to change about the game, and perhaps together we can come up with various improvements and make the game a lot more fun and interesting. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for the next one.